Today we're going to be turning an easy project that's fun for kids and adults alike. Stick around! Welcome to the shop. I'm so glad you could be here while we continue our series on making easy wood turning projects. Today we're going to be making some wooden spinning tops. And wooden spinning tops come in all different shapes and varieties and you can put a lot of different colors and textures on them. Today I hope to give you an idea of just some of the things that you can do and then you can go out and experiment for yourself. I'm Jason Geyser and this is Geyser Wood Turner. Let's make wooden spinning tops. The first thing we need to do is prep our wood blank to be received into a chuck. So what we're going to do is mark the centers. We're going to mount it between centers on the lathe and then we're going to turn a tenon on the end of it with our skew chisel to be received into a chuck so that we can hold it on one end. Uh, the wood selection is important. Um, I've used woods like cherry, beech, uh, this is a piece of eastern hard maple and I like that because it's really light in color and also you don't have to do a lot of sanding with it because if you really ride that bevel you can smooth it up uh, really well. So those hard dense closed grain woods work really well for tops. Now that we've got a tenon on the end we can go ahead and mount that into our chuck and we just push that into the chuck jaws and tighten that down and this is a Nova G3 chuck and it has a setup for a straight tenon. A lot of times you might need to cut a dovetail so that it'll fit into some dovetail jaws. And we'll just get that up there, bring up the tail stock, and we're going to use a spindle roughing gouge to get this round. We're going to make this into a cylinder really quick. As you start turning, remember to wear your safety gear. I'm wearing a face shield, a dust mask, and if you have no sense of fashion like me, you can wear socks and Crocs. Most of the hard work is done with your spindle roughing gouge. But then we're going to switch over to our 3-8 spindle gouge and we're going to start to think about shape. So we're going to start on the end and when you're starting to shape something you don't start where you want to end up. You start and make little passes at a time. So I'll start at the corner and we'll take a pass, we'll take a pass, we'll make sure that that bevel is riding on top and then we'll drop it. And hopefully you can see in this shot the cutting edge that I'm using. I'll drop that handle to where that bevel is riding on the piece of wood the whole time as I work my way down. And we're going to make a point on the end and this is going to be the bottom of our top, which is kind of a weird way of saying it. This is going to be the part that it spins on. So we'll work that down till we come to a point. And with the tailstock center in there, it's a little bit difficult to get it all the way to a point so we'll remove that and then a little by little just taking little bites remove that nub until we get down to a point and then we'll make one final pass and take as light a cut as you possibly can and that'll eliminate any tear out especially if you're rubbing that bevel all the way down it'll make it nice and smooth so you have very little sanding to do then as we go into making the handle for the top we're going to start by just making a cove and this is really good practice if you're not practice at making a cove this is just removing material so you'll take one little pass at a time and you'll go from the top drop it in and go to the center and stop you don't want to come back uphill you're always working downhill because if you come uphill you're going to go against the grain and you're going to have chunks fly out at you and you never want that So as we're taking little passes, I want you to keep in mind the shape that you're going to end up with. And you have to think about the process a little bit because when wood gets really thin, which we're going to get this down to a really thin handle, uh, it starts to vibrate. And when it starts to do that, uh, you're going to get a lot of vibration down at the end where your actual top is. So you want to leave enough wood there to support um, what you're doing on the end. So we'll work our way down little by little and get it thinner and thinner and then we're always going to take a thin pass and make sure that what we've done 
on the right hand side is complete before we start getting down to that thin spindle. Now we're going to get to the really fun part of this top where we color it. Um, a lot of times I like to slow the lathe down to about 200 RPM and if your lathe won't do that um, most lathes will go to about 500 RPM and that really works a lot too. It just gives time to get the color on there. I like to use Sharpie markers. I also have a variety of paintbrush tip markers um, that you'll see in a minute and you just hold the tip on the piece of wood and move it across and it magically puts color onto the top which is awesome. So one of the other things I really love to do is put spirals onto a top and the slower you go the better but if you find a marker that has a really strong color and puts out a lot of ink you can slowly move it across the piece of wood and sometimes you have to quickly move it across a piece of wood if you have a higher RPM and it puts a spiral on there. So let's do this one more time and this is the part of the top that you'll really see while it's spinning so this is the spiral that you really want to make it so it's really good so I'll just put my color on there put a couple of stripes and we'll do a little bit at the top and I'm going to use my paintbrush tip marker to kind of fill in the color in between. This is where that light color of wood really comes in handy because it just soaks up that color and keeps it nice and bright. And then I'll put my black Sharpie marker on there and hold it and then I'll move it all at once keeping the tip on there and we'll do it one more time. Hold it and move it all at once. And That really puts a really neat little spiral that you can see while it's spinning. And then all we have to do is cut it off of there. So I'm going to remove some wood so I don't ruin the design that I've already done. And we'll just take a few passes here until I think there's enough wood that I can cut it off. And hopefully you can see how that I'm riding that bevel all the way down. And then we'll just bring it to a point and we're going to get that really really small pretty much as small as a toothpick I always ask kids like what's easier to break a branch or a toothpick and they're always like a toothpick and so you get it on really really small and then it'll pretty much just come right off of there you can cut it off with a saw a lot of times I just like to move it back and forth and snap it alright since I showed you one top all the way through I'd like to kind of give you some ideas for some shapes and some colors and textures that you can do on your tops and then you can just experiment on your own and find what works for you. Uh, this top that I'm doing is an acorn top. Um, it's been a really popular one that I really think is a cool shape. So I'll start to make that cone then I'll shape the bottom and then I'll do a bead for the cap and then it's basically like the other top where I'm just removing the material for the stem or the spindle that you're going to spin it with. And just work your way down until that's ready to go. Our next shape is going to be kind of a classic top shape. So we'll round that down to a point. And then we'll start removing some of the material for our spindle and then round that down as we go to our spindle till we have that kind of classic top shape. And we'll bring it down and we'll even make a ball on the end of our spindle every once in a while you'll want to reverse the process and do the spindle first. I'm using a chatter tool to make some texture and I need to get to the end grain because this only works in end grain but this tool bounces up and down on the piece of wood and makes a cool pattern. You can see this awful noise that it makes which means it's working. Then I'll define the edges and you can see how it's chattered across there and you can throw a little color on top of that just lightly and then you can see the light and the dark of the pattern that it made. It's really kind of fun. So we'll continue to color this one the rest of the way and then unlike the other tops that we did this one will work in reverse and work our way down to the point. Just removing material until we get it all the way down to a point. Sometimes I like to use a wood die and I just put some on a paper towel and rub it onto the piece of wood and a lot of times I'll even overlay different dyes to get a really cool colors. 
and then you can do a lot of different patterns. You can do stripes, you can layer it on. Uh, it's endless possibilities. So just try it and keep trying and keep making more until you come up with the, some designs that you like and it'll be great. Tops, 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 and more tops. I really hope that you make a bunch of these and figure out how you like to make them and then let people play with them and bring some joy into their lives. These are a really fun toy. It's been a little while since I made any videos. In fact, it's been so long that I've let the beard grow back. And so hopefully you still recognize me from some of my older videos. Um, if you haven't noticed, I'm also in a new shop. I had to move and I'm in a little corner of my dad's shop, but I got everything set up again and I'll be able to continue to make wood turning videos and share my ideas with you. If you haven't already noticed, I've started putting some links down in the description of my videos and those links are going to take you to Amazon. And I've become an Amazon affiliate and I've been researching some wood turning products and some things that you can use and buy on Amazon that might help you out or be related to some of my videos. So if you do click those links, it's going to uh, take you there. And if you buy, then I'll receive a small commission. And what that's going to do is help keep things going around here. And so I thank you in advance if you do that. If you haven't been here before or you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and slide on over to that subscribe button and punch it, Chewy. Now, really, I thank you for being here today and we'll see you soon.